welcome and you are listening to the financial survival network and you're probably even watching us i'm carrie lutz and you know the sector gold and silver has just been on fire lately today for the first time oh god in uh, 10 years gold hit 1900 dollars the ounce which is pretty outrageous considering um, just a year ago one year ago, it was selling at around 1400 and change. And if you invested in any of uh, the companies we've talked with before, you are sitting really pretty. But you got to understand, we're just getting into the uh, super cycle or long-term bull market in these metals. It's not too late. There are a lot of great companies out there. And today I had the pleasure of talking with David Suda of Gold Terra Corp. And David, uh, known you a while. You've been working with the company uh, since 2018. Uh, you're busy drilling. You know, COVID might have tied you up a little bit, but it hasn't uh, stopped you by any stretch. Uh, 2020, what kind of year is it going to be? It's going to be the most exciting year for Gold Terra ever. Uh, you know, we we've absolutely lined ourselves up uh, for a big swing here. We're funded. We're drilling high grade. I'm on your show, Kerry. I mean, yeah. come on. Oh, well, hey. <laughs> I mean, well, well, talk about financial survival. Uh, financial survival is all about taking advantage of this $1,900 gold price, and I'm so glad to be uh, you know one of the first on your show on a day like today with uh, the message that I have. Yeah. And it's a great message. And I should tell you, you want to go over to Gold Terra, that's Terra with two R's, corp.com, sign up for their mailing list today so you get these announcements when they're fresh. And the ticker symbol on the OTC, it's TRXXF. And on the uh, TSX Venture, it's YGT. And right now, uh, you're kind of sitting in an enviable position, David, because You've got money. You're drilling 10,000 meters this summer. And basically, uh, you're just waiting for the market to discover you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've just been uh, quietly uh, beavering away with our heads down. And we've been very focused on, on putting together a team and a plan uh, that could take advantage of exactly the situation we're in right now. Uh, just in our cycle of exploration, it happens to be that we're going uh, with a direct focus on high grade. Uh, earlier this year, we drilled 10,000 meters on um, another target, which was lower grade. And um, now we're moving to high grade, which is what the market wants to see. And it's where we're going to get our real torque. And hey, one of the best things is you're in Canada, safe jurisdiction, you're in the Northwest Territories, you've got phenomenal infrastructure. Uh, you got your 43101 showing 735,000 ounces inferred at the Yellowknife project. And really, the company has got uh, all the things that I look for. It's got a real resource. It's a real company. It's capitalized. And it's got a resource that I assume right now you really want to expand that and fully develop the uh, the margins and really figure out what you're sitting on. Absolutely. This camp has had a tremendous history. Uh, it's produced over 14 million ounces of high grade in the past between two mines. And beyond that, it's relatively underexplored. And while we've been in a tough, uh, you know, really decade uh, of, of raising money, uh, of attracting, um, you know, investors to our space, uh, there was an opportunity to put together this tremendous package of land uh, quietly and under the radar. And so um, two of us, myself and, and uh, Gerald Panaton, coming from different backgrounds uh, with different skill sets, both saw the same opportunity here, which was, you know, uh, an underexplored uh, but past proven um, stratigraphy right next to a city in Canada, as you said, and with a safe jurisdiction. 
So um, we're absolutely pumped to be in the position to go and, and, and drill that and explore that properly. Uh, you know, follow up on that past history and discover the next one. Hey, and we would be remiss if we didn't really talk about uh, Gerald Panetton, where what he's bringing, he's executive chairman of the company, geologist over 35 years of experience, uh, president, founder, president, CEO of Detour Gold, which was uh, sold out. It, he expanded the resource from a million and a half ounces to over 16 million ounces. And what, uh, which obviously he's got a huge skill set. What do you think are the most important uh, skills that he's bringing to Gold Terra? Uh, when it comes to uh, mining companies, especially with gold, um, and and I think that the, the most important attribute uh, is tenacity uh, or or passion. And Gerald is tenacious. He's passionate. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of integrity behind his work. And so um, those attributes uh, coupled with his skill set, which, you know, as a geologist who built two mines for Barrick, um, you know, he, he'll say that he's, uh, Barrick was like university for him. He spent 12 years there working under some of the, um, the toughest and smartest people. Um, he took that skill set and then moved on uh, to form Detour himself. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. You got to work through difficult cycles. Sometimes it's hard to find money. Sometimes it's tough to find allies. Sometimes you have to protect what you've got from somebody who's trying to take it from you. And so he's been through all of those things in, in, in mining. And so um, seeing the same things I saw, which are, you know, a district scale play in Canada next to a city with past production. Um, and then having, seeing him assess the data and look at the, at the, the past core and, and all of the things that, that um, you know, he, he underwent in order to decide that this was a project he wanted to get involved with was a huge check mark for me, you know, having already been there for a year and a half, having seen the opportunity, um, having uh, worked on uh, dealing with some of the, the past problems uh, and, and, you know, trying to put together a team, it was a natural fit to bring them on. And so we've been together now for, uh, well, since last fall and uh, he's bought over 5 million shares. So um, if that doesn't underscore his passion for this project, uh, I don't know what does. He's, he's kind of become a uh, mining legend of recent, recent. And the fact that he's putting his money where his mouth is shows that, uh, you know, he's got a lot, more, uh, a lot more left to go in his career. And he's got to be excited about this one to get that intimately involved. Speaking of which, uh, other shareholders, uh, Who's involved in the company, uh, largest shareholders? Well, we've got a, a great uh, network of um, shareholders from uh, who are C-suite at other companies uh, from Vancouver. Uh, we've also got uh, some of the uh, sort of, well, how would I call them? The, the, they're the, the go-to um, people, the smart money uh, institutionally in mining. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, we've expanded our institutional uh, holders. And as you said uh, in a conversation with me earlier, uh, that's a good thing and a bad thing because sometimes the institutions don't necessarily uh, drive your price up. But uh, I can tell you one thing, um, they're smart money. They know how to assess projects. And uh, for the uh, retail shareholder, uh, you know, following that smart money, having them uh, effectively vet projects, and, uh, and then being able to you know, spread the word and, and help move the stock price, I think is the right mix. The institutions are seeing uh, major inflows for the first time in a long time. And, uh, and so uh, I think we've got a great balance there. Yeah, and, uh, and that's always good. Hey, the fact that you're able to raise uh, 7.3 million Canadian just recently, well, uh, the job of raising money has all of a sudden gotten a lot easier, hasn't it? Well, it, it, raising money is never easy because you want to take the right money. Uh, but yes, there is money chasing the sector now. I've, I've heard uh, one of my peers in the past say, and I smirk because I, I, 
it's uh, it's such a, a cheeky comment you know uh, sometimes it's easier to find money than it is to find gold and i think that, <laughs> and i think that that is true uh you know right now certainly uh, but again you know it, it's the finding gold part that really makes uh, you know turns that money into something and um we feel that where we are we have uh, you know one of the best opportunities in canada for that okay so speaking of finding gold uh, you're going to be uh, drilling on the Campbell Shear. What makes that so attractive? The Campbell Shear hosted 5 million of the 6 million ounces that were mined at the Con Mine. And of those uh, 5 million ounces, the average uh, grade was approximately 16 grams per ton. And so they were using, but basically throwing away uh, any material that was under uh, 10 grams. Could you imagine in today's world, uh, that type of environment? They were uh, running a profitable mine uh, at gold prices of like 250 and $300. Uh, wow. So when they, when they, as they, you know, as they became, as they started working at the margin, as things uh, got really bad with gold price, uh, in the late 19, in the, in the late, uh, yeah, 1900s, early two thousands there, the, uh, the mine was just incredibly prolific still. So that's why we're chasing the Campbell shear because, uh, it was an incredible, uh, producer of gold. Right. And, and you're expecting higher grade there. I mean, you found uh, 1.3 grams per ton, which is, uh, nothing to, uh, to sneeze about uh, at the uh, Sam Auto main, and now you're going for the uh, the really high grade. So 1.3 grams per ton carry is uh, nothing to shake a stick at, as you said, especially at $1,900 gold. Uh, we ran our uh, 43101 inferred gold resource at $1,300 gold price. So um, any of those metrics people see in our marketing materials, uh, people should know that um, you know we were very conservative. Uh, and and uh, so uh, 1.3 is not bad, but you want to have uh, some 6.5 and you want to have some 10 and you want to have some 15 uh, to, to juice that up. And this is a camp that certainly has the ability to deliver that. And I think uh, that's what sets us apart from uh, some of our peers who, um, albeit have great projects, uh, they might have, um, you know, great rock and it might be very mineable, but, um, you know, that high grade is, is a component that's often missing. And so uh, it behooves us to chase it since it's, it's uh, been there in abundance in the past. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and the great thing is you've got uh, 800 square kilometers district scale. So I assume there are other really good drilling targets that you're going to get to and you probably have a drilling plan for them. The biggest problem from the team, the biggest problem the team had prior to um, the current uh, teams, uh, the current iteration uh, of the company was that um, there was just too much for them to uh, synthesize uh, and absorb and turn into a focused plan. That's, that's almost one of the challenges of the project is that it is so big and that there are so many targets. And so, um, you know, r right upon my arrival, uh, we ran a study where uh, the, whole, the whole point of it was to, you know, systematically identify um, the top tier of, of targets and attack them one by one. Now, right. you're always going to, you're always going to, you know, shift and pivot. Um, but right now we're focused on adding ounces uh, to our inferred resource. And that's comp comprised of, uh, you know, a handful of targets. And then of course, we want to take a big swing at the Campbell shear and make a new discovery there. Yeah. And that would, uh, that would do wonders, obviously, uh, for your 43101 and, uh, and hopefully, uh, it would uh, lead to the market really fully, uh, appreciating the value of the company up until recently what do you think the biggest challenge has been for you you know running this company and and getting on the ground drilling 
Well, access to capital, as you said, uh, over you know the last couple of years w- was more challenging than it is today. So um, I believe that a project like this just needs to be drilled and it needs to be drilled a lot. And that's the vision that Gerald and I have. You know, let's drill this thing and let's keep going. Let's never stop drilling. Let's find the gold. Um, you know, if, if we could announce that we were going to drill 100,000 meters, then uh, that would be my dream because we, we would be able to continually search um, and, and realize uh, the value that we believe is in the ground on this property. So um, that, that's been a challenge. And as I said, having a focus has been a challenge because you know there's there's so much shiny ground, there's so much smoke, as they say, um, and uh, and then I would also say that a challenge has been uh, trying to realize uh, value for shareholders that have been um, you know longtime supporters of this company. Uh, people are uh, tired and not just uh, as shareholders of uh, gold terra but there are many companies juniors you know that have been stranded uh, in a tough part of a cycle and i think that um you know the fact that we're going into these amazing gold prices and as as you said 19 is just the beginning i mean it's so clear we're going way higher higher than we've ever gone uh it's going to be aggressive and i think it's gonna it's gonna um, but people got to get in now because I said it's going to be aggressive. Yeah. And I think that in and of itself solves that problem. For sure. And uh, yeah, we were in a really challenging uh, period of time the past uh, six, seven years. A lot of companies didn't make it. And now we're hopefully uh, getting to the promised land. And hey, as far as you go, you know, you're on the financial side of things uh, for much of your career. Now you're actually running the company. Uh, how did you make the transition and what led you to it? It's really simple. Uh, my job was to raise money for uh, public companies. And, and I was part of, of the mechanism for uh you know, promoting public companies for um, broadening their uh, audience, for um, creating investing opportunities for uh, institutional uh, investors, portfolio managers. So um, on any given day, I was uh, looking for um, as many as, you know, 10, 20, 30 companies to um, analyze, to promote, to raise money for. Um, and what I realized uh, quickly was there aren't that many good ones. And so uh, now I'm wholeheartedly, 100% uh, passionately engaged in um, leading the charge for what I believe is the best opportunity I've ever seen in my life. And, and you know, I, I back that with a move from a life uh, with a family, in a city, uh, in schools, with friends, uh, to you know, make a move to Vancouver and start a new life and take hold of this opportunity. So if that doesn't, um, if that doesn't speak to your question, uh, I'm happy to, <laughs> you can rephrase and I'll, and I'll re-answer. No, that's fine. And, and uh, yeah, to pick up and move for an opportunity, kind of, uh, kind of the ultimate risk it's the ultimate, uh, it's the ultimate fresh start, if you will. And you're actually running the company now rather than talking about the people who are running the company. And in this case, Golterra really almost sells itself. I mean, 700 uh, plus thousand ounces and you're barely getting started. And who knows what, uh, what this latest drill program will bring. It certainly seems like you're on the right track. What, what are you looking at for the company? Let's just talk about the near-term catalysts. I mean, okay. uh, given the market background, um, we are in the midst of, of putting boots on the ground uh, to start drills turning 
in just a few weeks, uh, maybe a month. And then we'll have uh, the results from that drilling coming out at the end of September, let's say mid to, to late September you know, through to October. And once we, uh, once we complete with that, we can take all the great results that we had at Sam Auto uh, and, and we'll, uh, we'll take the results that we, we find at our high grade drilling at Crestarum and we'll update our resource and then we're just going to start drilling again. So it's going to be nonstop news flow coming out of us and it's all going to be about drill results. Um, we're, we're working on some other uh, corporate uh, initiatives, which I think could be very exciting to the market. Uh, can't say too much about them, uh, but you know, we, we've, when you bring in a team, we, we have, we have a, a board that's very engaged uh, with a lot of experience. Um, we're, we're working every angle and, and we've got smart people with experience, uh, you know, working in the background to provide us with the best shot uh, to, to create shareholder value. So that's all I'm going to say on, on that. But, um, you know, longer term, what's the exit strategy? It's, that's up to shareholders that, you know, whether we build it or sell it, we get asked all the time. All I can say is a year ago, I wasn't credible if I said we, we would build it because we didn't have Gerald on board. We didn't have Louis Dion on our, on our board of directors. This is a guy who's an engineer uh, who's been C-suite at several very successful companies. He's built mines for Barrick. It's where Gerald and, and Louis know each other from. And so now with a team like that, when somebody asks, you can say, well, we could build it or we could sell it, but let's decide what's going to make the most money for shareholders. Yeah. And that's great to be in that position, to be in the position of, uh, of having your options open and, you know, it always sounds good when you can actually build a mine, but to actually have people who've done it in very complex jurisdictions, challenging jurisdictions, Africa, and, to actually get it producing, uh, that kind of says a lot. And the fact that you've got those people involved really, really makes a big difference. Well, I'm glad we had this chance to sit down, David, and talk. Again, the, uh, the website is gold, terra, T-E-R-R-A corp.com. And the ticker symbol on the TSX Venture is YGT. And on the OTC, it's TRXXF. And David, will be following up with you and uh, checking on your progress here. I'm sure it's going to come fast and furious. And if you haven't gotten into this stock yet, it's definitely one you want to take a look at. Uh, seemingly appears to be very underpriced compared to what's happened to many of your peers in the, uh, in the past uh, couple of months, David. So we wish you the best of luck. I'm really uh, thankful for being on with you finally, Carrie. And I think our timing is great. I um, appreciate uh, all your uh, questions and look forward to checking back with you uh, very soon.